great to, uh, great to be here with you. Really, you know, this story today begins back in 2000 when I was challenged to think differently about the wealth that a, a client I was working with uh, came to me. And the, the challenge was, how can we use this wealth to do something good in the world? At the time, you can imagine a kind of, as a global, an allocator of globally diversified portfolios, I was kind of inspired, but also challenged and uh, concerned about how to make those two things work. Because as we know, especially at that time, the ideology of the modern investment world was singularly focused on the idea that it's all about investment performance. That's it. That's all that really mattered. The outcomes, the impact, the accomplishments that my clients were really trying to seek from this capital had to combat this ever complicated and technical investment ecosystem that was really designed to maximize fees and slash a path to maximum returns. So, but, but that's the world I inhabited. That's where I worked. That's where my, and so it became really clear that this, and my client appreciated the extensive uh, undertaking to transform this work into investments that could actually deliver both returns and impact. Given this rare opportunity, to transform my practice, as well as recognizing that this was something that resonated with my philosophy, my ethos, and candidly seeing this as a business opportunity, I did what most people do with these types of challenges. I just dove in head first. And so, as a result of that work, arrived Sonin Capital. You know, the name Sonin Capital is simply a modified acronym to define the nation idea of social and environmental capital. And Sonin really stands proudly today uh, as a firm for those who feel the same passion, the urgency, the conviction that there must be a better way to invest as a place to be. You know, our clients often come to us with kind of rekindled dreams, dreams that haven't really been forgotten, but for far too long have been sidelined by the financial industry's insistence that the only thing that matters is investment performance. That simple conjunction of and is what separates the traditional capitalists from those of us who want to do good in this world. That is the power of what Sonin Capital seeks, to deliver competitive financial performance and positive social and environmental impact. But investing with social environmental considerations, it adds another dimension a shared reality that we have to acknowledge that there's just an interconnectedness between companies that we invest in and the world we actually inhabit. The truth is, in simple terms, all investments have an impact. And over these past decades, what's happened is investors have been given dozens of ways to research, evaluate, analyze an investment to the point where they've lost sight of the world that these investments occupy. We all know that the price of an investment is up to the market. And yet, the true price of that investment is borne by all of us. If you think I'm exaggerating, consider one of the most water-intensive crops that is grown on thousands of acres of farmland, generates $350 a ton, and is grown in one of the driest places on Earth. I'm speaking about alfalfa, grown in drought-stricken Arizona, to feed cows on the other side of the world. All investments have an impact. This notion that we must yield on our values in order to achieve competitive returns and have impact is tired and outdated. Rest assured, however, the absolute traditionalist has no compunction about using their resources to undermine the industry. All around us, We've seen the deconstruction of ESG and the rise of green hushing, where companies are downplaying the social or environmental impacts that they may be doing incredibly great work at generating, all for fear of irrational res responses. Sadly, this now is also a trend within those that are putting efforts forth towards race, uh, addressing racial equity. Our work in this field matters even more so today. Whether it's environmental catastrophes, racial and gender inequity, sustainable efforts, all of these policies, policies that make sense, policies that don't make sense, 
The powers that be have not stemmed the malaise that they are creating, and our leaders certainly have not demonstrated their ability to rise up to these challenges. Fiduciary responsibility is most often what is quoted as the rationale for the singular focus on financial return. But sadly, the world has lost sight of the origins of the word fiduciary, which stem from to trust. So what's the point of trusting the board of a retirement plan who only worries about having the funds to pay retirement benefit without any regard for the world they're leaving for their retirees? Imagine, here's your check to enjoy retirement. Sorry for your health problems, the lack of access to healthy foods. Oops, you have to move all while lowering, potentially lowering your life expectancy. The best intentions often obscure negative outcomes. Those foundations that create more problems with how they, the majority of their assets are invested than what they're doing for good with those earnings. Or in the context of a family that focuses on preserving wealth for future generations without recognizing that those investment decisions are robbing those future generations of long, fulfilling lives. As I look across this audience, it's all dark in here, but nonetheless, I can still see some, some familiar faces. I see many of these familiar faces who have been on the front lines of innovating solutions to the social and environmental challenges that we face. I also see some new faces out here, uh, which I imagine are awakening to these new vital opportunities our industry offers. To the veterans of the ecosystem, I thank you for all your tireless effort, for your courage to pursue innovative business models that embrace the notion that, excuse me, that embrace the notion that commercial business can be a force for good. Please continue to be, be willing to share your successes, but also your failures so that we can attract others into this field while saving them making those same mistakes that we have made. To those just joining us or early in their journey, I welcome you. To be clear, we still have a long road to go. The good news is that there are many of us here today and at this event that have the battle scars from which you can learn and accelerate your own journey and path. And lastly, to all, please don't take this time together that we've had here at SOCAP as a place to generate more topics for longitudinal studies or theoretical exercises, but use this as a framework for action. So join me in reclaiming the narrative of our time and reclaim assets as a force for good in this world. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day.